Zambians go to the polls tomorrow to elect uh, their members of parliament and also who will be president. There are 16 candidates that are facing each other uh, tomorrow and uh, as many are speculating that it's a two-horse race between uh, the incumbent president Edgar Lungu and uh, one of the opposition leaders Hakainde Hichilema, uh, there are some others who believe that they have a genuine chance at upsetting the odds and one of them is the leader of the Socialist Party, Dr. Fred Mbembe. I spoke to him a little earlier. Dr. Fred Mbembe, the leader of the Socialist Party, thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you very much for hosting me. Now, the Socialist Party is a relatively new player in terms of Zambian politics. What do you think you are bringing to the party, as it were? We are bringing ideology, the socialist ideology to the, to, to the political arena. We are bringing the various values of honest, equity, humility, and solidarity. And uh, we are bringing an honest campaign that is devoid of mud slinging, that is devoid of violence, that is, devo that is devoid of lies, and slander. Do you think you've been able to get your message across to the voters across the country? Do they understand what socialism is? They do. Socialism is not complicated. As Chris Haney had once defined it, socialism is about access to education, access to health services, access to clean water, having a solid roof over your shoulder, or over your head, and all the other services required in an organized society. That is simple to understand. There's nothing complicated about socialism. Socialism is not about the bombastic words we hear. It's about the basic necessities of life, a dignified life for our people. What have Zambians been telling you on the election campaign trail? What are they saying to you on the election issues? One thing, wherever we went that came out is dishonest of politicians. They get elected and they disappear. They never go back to the people. The people are saying, we hope you will not be like these. Who have come here, we gave them votes and they have disappeared. So we changed the program. Our members of parliament have to reside in the constituencies where they live. If you leave that constituency, there will be a bare election. People can't be represented by somebody who doesn't live in the area. So we are assuring them that that won't happen because the people you are going to elect are people you live with in the same community. And they participated in choosing those people. Of course, there are other issues of education. Their children can go to school. There are issues of health services. There are issues of water and sanitation. There are issues of food. There are issues of housing. There are issues of roads. So these are the primary things that really concern our people. Food is linked to agriculture, I may say. What do you think has gone wrong that life is uh, so hard for the average uh, Zambian at the moment? Because that'll give you clues on uh, what not to do and what to fix. Well, the capitalist economy is not there to look after people. It's not there to develop people. It's there to make, to maximize profits. What you get as, a, uh, as poor people is just what it trickles down. And this is what the current Pope of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, is against. He's clearly opposed to trickle down economics. And he has classified the capitalism as the, worst and as the number one enemy of the Catholic Church today. And it's understandable because it degrades human beings. Any authentic religion is, cared about, is worried about the dignity or is concerned about the dignity of human beings. The poor of this world was the concern of Christ. Christ never left the poor to themselves. He cared for their food. He cared for their health. He did not tell them, die, you go to heaven. My father will receive you. No. When they were hungry, he made sure they were fed. When they were naked, he made sure they were clothed. 
When they were thirsty, he made sure they had water to drink. When they were ill-clad, he made sure they were treated. This is what we must pay attention to. This is what capitalism is failing to pay attention to. And also there's the issue of inequality. Despite the technologies improving in the world, inequality is growing in the world, poverty is growing in the world. Capitalism is not able to deal with these problems. They go to Davos every year in winter. What do they discuss? Their main concern is how to deal with the growing poverty in the world amidst great production, increased production capacity. They are concerned about growing inequality, growing hunger, growing poverty in the world. Is it because the capitalists don't have a good economist? No, they have good economists who can deal with these issues. But the system is not made for that. To achieve those things, to wipe out inequality, to wipe out poverty, to wipe out hunger, you have to get rid of capitalism. Are they ready to get rid of capitalism? No. And because they are not ready to get rid of capitalism, they are trying to square the circle. They are coming up just with the mitigations. It's like trying to treat HIV. You can easily find a drug that kills the virus. But the challenge is to find a drug that does not only kill the virus, that, that, that kills the virus without killing the body. Can they administer a drug that kills the virus and kills you after a few weeks? No. That's why we don't have treatment for, for HIV today. We have interventions that do not get rid of the virus, but reduces its mutilation. So that's what the capitalism, the, the, the challenge is facing. And that's what is pushing us into this poverty in Zambia today. We have poverty levels in certain provinces of our country of 82.2% in the western part of Zambia, western province. 82.2% poverty level. Followed by another province, Rapula, with 81.1% poverty level. We have average rural poverty of 76.6%. We have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. We have one of the highest infant mortality rates in the world. What has produced this? It's not nature. It's the human decisions. It's the policies that we are pursuing, the neoliberal capitalist policies that we're pursuing. But Zambia is not the only one affected in this way. Even the big, the rich capitalist countries still, still today have high levels of poverty amid this such wealth. And they are increasingly under crisis adopting socialist methods, especially under the COVID regression, uh, the, the pandemic. You can see the USA adopting socialist approaches to deal with some of the problems they are facing under this crisis. I've spoken to a number of uh, political parties and they've said that it's been uh, exceptionally hard on the campaign trail. The authorities have been uh, putting out a number of restrictions under the guise of COVID-19, but they say that many, much of it has been more political. Have you experienced that yourself as a party? Yes, we have experienced that. Some of the concerns about the pandemic are real, are legitimate. We were much more concerned about the impartial implementation of those restrictions. They have not been implemented in an impartial way. The president of the country has been all out distributing face masks, holding huge meetings in violation of those restrictions. Nobody can arrest him. The police can't arrest him. The electoral commission can't do anything to him other than moral persuasion. He's ready to win an election over dead bodies. We are not here to rule the dead. We are not here to govern the dead. We are here to govern the living. So we have stayed away from those uh, practices and we have, we have followed the regulations strictly. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. We don't want to win over dead bodies. Do you think that this election will be free and fair? It won't be free and fair. From the inception, when you look at free and fair, you have to start at the beginning or at the end of an election. We start at the end of the 2016 elections. What space was there for us in the opposition to mobilize, to entrench our parties? 
That was before COVID. We were not allowed to hold meetings under the Public Order Act. The police will come and arrest you. We have been arrested for holding small meetings of 20 people, of party members. We thought, you know, the 90 days official campaign period would be different, but we have COVID and other regulations. So it has been very, very difficult. This will not be free and fair. And also access to the media. The dominant media in Zambia is the state media. The main broadcasting uh, enterprise is owned by the, the state, ZNBC. No political, no opposition political party has meaningful access to that. It's a monopoly of the ruling party. The state has two newspapers. The opposition is not covered in any meaningful way by those two opposition uh, state-owned newspapers. And the private media is also too expensive now. There's no free news. You are paying just to appear even on a news item. And you require millions of dollars to do that for your campaign. A new party of poor people finds it very difficult to set itself a political agenda and achieve it. So then finally, how do you rate your chances then on Thursday, given all these challenges that you're a new party and that there have been uh, restrictions along the way? How do you think you'll fare on Thursday? We have the strongest message. And one way or another, it has been delivered to our people. And they have understood it. So our chances are as good as any other of the key players. Dr. Friend Mbembe, thank you so much indeed for joining us. We wish you the best of luck on uh, Thursday and uh, perhaps we'll have another conversation. And who knows, it may be as you uh, being elected president. Thank you very much.